Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, tonight we're going to look at FOFOA. Uh, I'll do a brief recap for those of you who aren't familiar with who he is. FOFOA is the chief silver FUD artist out there. FUD is fear, uncertainty, and doubt. I don't know who funds him. I don't know who backs him. I don't know. He's just another shill who's out there shilling for the present system. Um, but his uh, his numbers are so ridiculous, they're so absurd, and his ideas are so absurd. Um, I just have to spend some time on this nonsense. Now, FOFOA stands for Friend of Friend of Another, and he came out... Well, you got to understand who Friend of Another is. Another was this person who came up with this insider theory that uh, he told his friend, and the writings are from friend of another, that's where we get FOA. And he did a series of writings in the late 90s telling us about what another had said and all this idea about free gold and why gold is going to reemerge as the world money. And the reasoning behind this was because of the petrodollar and his different take on that. So the different take essentially was that the Saudis and all the rest of the oil kingdoms in the Middle East were not, did not feel comfortable having their wealth and financial assets held in the Western banking system, I would say with good reason. So the argument was that they were accumulating gold in trade for their oil, but they were doing it surreptitiously. So basically they were stacking up a whole bunch of gold. Now, as far as I know, that really didn't happen in the first place. I've already talked about Egypt and Libya and the countries that we have already overthrown and taken the gold. But I think the rest of the gold probably was held in vaults or wasn't even there, it was paper gold in the West. And so when you think about it, the whole theory of another or friend of another is bogus on its face because what difference does it make if you're trusting the West for the value of your financial assets or you're trusting the West for the value of your gold assets, which are essentially pieces of paper that say you own gold in the West. So the whole theory is utterly absurd and ridiculous and has been proven to be so by what has happened since a friend of another's writings came out in the Middle East with the United States asserting hegemony there and basically taking the gold back, whatever little gold was actually accumulated there, taking it all back. So, But I wanted to talk about his thoughts about silver. You can see this picture here is making fun of the silver bugs. That's one of the things he loves to do. And uh, it starts off with this quote here from a friend of another. At the very least, the first $10,000, he's referring to the first $10,000 of the gold price. When gold hits 10000 I think they're projecting a $35,000 price for gold when this event occurs. At the very least, the first $10,000 of that figure would represent the current purchasing power of the dollar today. We will see that figure even as our economic function drives all other hard money metals into the toilet. I'm talking about 50 cent silver. Yes, we will see $50 silver in our time. $50 for a 100 ounce bar, that is. Even if these are actual dollar numbers even if these actual dollar numbers prove incorrect, relative inflation adjusted prices will show the exact same ratios to gold. Now, and this is from his post, The Silver Dollar. I'm going to skip the first part and just get down to the ridiculous ratios that he, he talks about here. So here is the original quote about the 50 cent silver and then FOA is going to try to defend this. Now, there's something here that is left out, but we'll pick up on that here. Agreed, but still in use, just like all those pesos around the world. But remember, at the very least, the first $10,000 of that figure would represent the current purchasing power of the dollar today. We will most likely get there long before the price of inflation jumps way up. Once the current dollar gold market fails and gives way to a free physical price, we will see that figure even as our economic function drives all other hard money metals into the toilet. I'm talking about 50 cent silver while gold races past its first grant. Now, did you note that there? Okay, so 
the, this was written back in, I think, 2001. So his prediction was that when gold goes through a thousand, silver would fall to 50 cents. So right there, uh, I think gold was trading at 250, silver was at five bucks. So you couldn't be more wrong than that. I mean, that's about as wrong as you can get. Now, let's watch FO, FOA try to defend this. He says, I highlighted that bit at the end about $10,000 gold and 50 cent silver because I want to explain my take on it. On the day FOF, FOA wrote that post, gold was $261 and silver was $4.37. FOA was talking about a revaluation, so I think that if we want to get inside his mind and see what he was envisioning, why, why do I want to get inside his mind? He's obviously a clueless clown who doesn't know what he's talking about. Uh, this is this is this guy's idol. We should pay more attention to the revaluation multiples than the nominal prices he mentioned. For gold to go from 261 to 10,000 would be a revaluation multiple of 38. And for silver to go from $4.37 to 50 cents would be a devaluation divisor of 8.74. Based on today's prices, that's gold at $45,000 at the very least and silver at $1.85 per ounce. If we want to put that in ratio terms by weight, which is a metric that doesn't make sense in free gold because it will be used in different ways, it only makes sense for things being used in the same way, i.e. an investment, the gold-silver ratio of 24,000 to 1. This is his prediction, a gold-silver ratio of 24,000 to 1. Now you can see what he's hinting at here. I have no idea why he's saying this. He says that, and we'll, we'll look at SRS Rocco's comment comment on that but you see he said for things being used in the same way i.e. as an investment so his prediction is that when this event whatever this event is happens free gold then silver will no longer be used as an investment so it's going to collapse in price now this is comes from his bizarre notion he gives some charts here of silver and its industrial use and silver demand. He says here, silver is a great example of this idea. S silver is currently at $16.15 as I write. I'll bet there isn't a single silver bug in the world who thinks that price might be six times higher than its true fair value. According to Dan Popescu, silver demand today is approximately 56% industrial versus 10% for gold. Here's the chart for silver demand. So this is his twisted thinking. Uh, I, I don't know why he would have, I guess maybe the only explanation could be that if the industrial demand for silver completely collapses, which I don't foresee that happening. I guess he's looking at an end of the world type scenario. Uh, so he's seeing a glut of all this industrial silver come rushing onto the market which would overwhelm the investment side of it and on the margin would collapse the price. I guess that's his thinking, which is absurd. In my mind, uh, the 56% industrial amount that goes into silver versus 10% for gold is a big positive for silver because that investment demand not only won't dry up, but uh, it will continue to grow as well as the investment demand for silver will continue to grow. Now, I'm going to show you some of the charts and facts on this, but there's another, there's an article that actually came out a couple days ago. I just happened upon when I was researching this. It's kind of strange that we thought of it at the same time, but this is from SRS Rocco, and this is his rebuttal. Uh, on Silver Seek, free gold rebuttal, a case for much higher silver prices. And he, he does uh, a refutation of what uh, FOFOA is saying. And I, I don't want to go through the whole thing. He gives three points here. And I just want to go to the main point, uh, his uh, item three. He says, but if you throw in a little economic deflation, what FOFOA 
A has called our economic function, which will decrease the industrial demand for silver until much of the global malinvestment is cleared away, along with a little price overshoot to the downside and a sprinkling of all that supply overhang competing with the miners and scrap refiners. I think $2.75 might be even a little conservative. I don't think so. He's buying into this. <laughs> incredible. I don't think silver will stay that low forever. As I said at the top post, it's an exceptional metal with many great industrial uses. So like America, where a few solid economic ideals still exist and await the opportunity to rise like phoenixes from the ashes of a fiery transition, I think silver has some fantastic industrial uses and will rise like a phoenix. FOFOA believes the United States will rise like a phoenix from the ashes of a fiery transition and consumption of industrial silver will increase, putting value back into their low forecasted $2.75 price. This goes against 2,000 plus years of gold and silver store of value. And of course, this is the whole purpose for people like FO, FOA, and there's so many other fudsters out there. And what they're desperately fighting against is Fichetti's principle that money is determined by the people. That whatever people choose to use as a store of value is a store of value. Whatever people use as money is money. Because people determine what money is, not governments, people. It's the vote of the free market. And that's why these fudsters are out there because that's just, this is what they want to prevent. Because it's their Achilles heel. So he says the store of value properties. FOA believes gold will revalue higher as it, as it will back all this worthless fiat money, but they fail to realize that energy is the key, not silly fiat money. What happens to the global financial and economic system when the peak of unconventional oil production begins in earnest? Does FOFOA make any forecast to what happens to the value of the $105 trillion in global conventional assets under management when world oil production plummets? How do they see the U.S. rising from the ashes when we finally witness the collapse of the highly levered shale and oil gas industry? The reason silver will increase in value in the future has nothing to do with industrial demand, but rather as a result of investors moving out of increasingly worthless paper assets into physical ones to protect wealth. Silver is just as good a store of wealth as gold. It, has just, it just has less stored economic energy than gold. Of course, FOFOA will label me as a silver bug, but they fail to realize that I'm a store of wealth advocate who believes silver is the better value going forward. This is due to a great deal less above ground silver in the world for acquiring a store of value compared to gold. Now, let's look at some charts that try to make this point here. Uh, he's uh, Yes, he's actually projecting a 20,000 to 1 uh, gold to silver ratio, which is just, it's laughably absurd. But let's look at some facts about wh what's actually been selling. So let, let's start with this chart. This is also from SRS Rocco. And this is American gold versus silver eagle sales. And this is what Eric Sprott is always talking about. We know that the the gold and silver ratio coming out of the ground isn't basically around nine to one. It's falling. It continues to fall. And we've talked about this before, um, not getting into all the flatter theories and all the other theories, but a basic principle of most theories as far as buoyancy explanations. Um, a lot of people who have studied silver and silver mining have talked about how silver is so much lighter than gold. The ores are much nearer the surface. So for example, the Comstock load that those blue veins were right up near the surface. They found those real easily and they found a ton of them. Those type of veins and silver mines, those, those are gone because the stuff near the surface has been found. Now, as you go deeper, you're going to find more gold than you are silver ratio wise. Of course, you're still gonna find more silver, but the ratio is gonna to continue to drop the deeper you go. So as the easier near the surface stuff is mined, which will have a lot more silver than it will gold, relatively to the ratio, um, you might see 25 to one, but at where we're at right now, we're dropping down. So we're looking at nine, eight, probably seven, six, five as we go forward, less and less silver as we go deeper. 
But you can see in this chart that the silver demand is in 2014 was 84 to 1 for the gold eagle versus the silver eagle. Now, I'm not going to talk about paper, and paper is part of the basis of the FOFOA FUD argument. But we're just talking about physical gold and physical silver. So you can see very clearly here that at the time that FOA was writing, uh, we're talking about really just a two to one ratio. Um, there was only about twice as many ounces of silver being purchased as there were ounces of gold. Now we're up to 84 ounces of silver being purchased per ounce of gold investment demand this isn't industrial demand this is investment demand so investment demand is clearly growing now let's look at another chart here uh, i'm sorry more figures here from the u.s mint um, this is this year's silver demand now we know that we had uh, based on the srs rocco it looks like the last year is 2014 it looks like it hit a record high of about 45 million. Are we going to do that? Maybe. Where are we at right now? Well, with half of the year reporting, we're at about 19 million. So we might not quite make it to that, but you can see the trend is still up. It's definitely not falling off or going back anywhere near to where we went. You can also see that uh, as the price of silver ran up, the, the bull market started in 2003. The accumulation of silver eagles was flatline, and it wasn't really until silver had corrected and then started to seriously move up that as the price of silver moved up, you can see the peak in 2011, the demand for silver eagles continued strong and then rebounded immediately the next year. Even as the prices were high, the, the demand for physical silver went up. So why the FOFOA FUD? I To scare people out of physical silver. That's the reason behind all of their manipulations, all of the shills and con artists and liars and fudsters that the bankers hire, they have to scare people out of silver. That's their only alternative because, as I said, if the people decided, as Fichetti predicted, to value silver as a store of wealth, even if 1% did, even if 5% did, then we're talking about a hyperinflationary blowout in the price of silver. That's why you have people like FOFOA. Now, let's get to the chart of the Lunar series. This one was interesting. I found this on the Silver Stackers forum. And this is a person who took the mintage figures of the Lunar series and broke them into a chart. Now, this is the Lunar 2. He also has a Lunar 1, which is kind of irrelevant now. As you know, we're waiting for that monkey to come out. I did see today while I was on eBay, I did see that there were a number of the half ounce goats being bought for up to $24. That was really surprising to me. It wasn't surprising to me to find a lot of the uh, half ounce dragons being bought on eBay today for $24, $25, but to see the half ounce goats already being bought for $20 plus on eBay. That was surprising. But there's some interesting information in this chart. I just wanted to go over it a little bit. So the way this chart works is it's color coded uh, from the red to the, well, pardon me for being colorblind. I'm not sure what that color is. But anyway, it goes from the mouse to the horse. And you can see here we have the half ounce coins the one ounce coins, the two ounce coins, five ounce coins, and the 10 ounce coins. Now, the first thing that's gonna stand out at you when you look at this chart, of course, is going to be the allotment of the one ounce. We know that the one ounce has always, always fills its allotment of 300,000. That's something the Perth Mint has chosen to do. They've always done that. That's to create scarcity and demand for the coin and make it numismatic eventually and that's something we really like because they're limited they promise they can't make any more of those so those 300,000 one ounce allotments always seem to sell out it was the year of the horse i'm sorry i'm sorry the year of the dragon if my memory is correct it was the year of the dragon 2012 
and that's this spike right here. That was the first year when they came out not priced as semi numis but priced as numis. In other words, the one ounce silver uh, dragon was around 99 bucks when it first came out and I saw it drop to 75. I, I don't have one of those. I don't think I even bought one because I never saw the price drop significantly. But you can see that that also happens to be the first year where the, where the volume of the half ounce just simply exploded. Now, I personally believe that that was a response. I know I bought a ton of those. Uh, that was a response to that high price that was put on those one ounce coins. You can see that also the two ounce coins were, hit a record high. That's the highest selling two ounce and it's the highest selling half ounce as well is that 2012 Dragon. Now another thing that's kind of interesting that I saw somebody point out in a recent uh, commentary, they were talking about the the Chinese lunar calendar and they're talking about dragons in the Bible and uh, all these animals and everything. Uh, and uh, all these animals in the uh, Chinese calendar, of course, they all exist today, except for the dragon. The dragon no longer exists. Do I believe dragons were real? Yes, I do. The Bible says that dragons are real. Just go, go ahead and read Job. Do I believe the legends that there were dragons? Yes, I do. I'm not going to go way into the dragon and the explanation of why there aren't any dragons, or if there are, we haven't found them. Uh, but we'll just say that it was changes in the atmosphere post-flood. But this coin is the only animal that is not existent today. And so for me, I think that makes it the most important coin in the series. Not to mention the fact that the dragon is a tremendous symbol in the in the orient i mean everything is the dragon in japan china all through the orient that's definitely the most important animal symbol for them so am i surprised that this massive amount of nearly 400,000 half ounce dragons and uh, this very large amount 125,000 two ounce dragons has still not suppressed the price no i i'm not surprised at all um there's going for a very good uh, amount, even though they're relatively not scarce. Now, again, 300,000 is still a very low number if you're talking about worldwide investors. So 400,000 of the half ounce isn't that great of a number either when you're talking about all these investors, especially the Chinese. But you can see that dramatic drop off we had when the snake came out. And the snake was semi new me. You could pick up the snake for maybe a few bucks above spot. Now, when the horse came out, they jacked that one up a little bit and uh, you had to wait. And I don't have, I think I got some horses for 35. I only bought like 20 of them because they never really came down. So the dragon and the horse, now the snakes, it just happened to be a year I wasn't collecting those coins. So I don't believe I even have any, except for maybe some half ounce, I think I might have them. But anyway, so what's the upshot of all this? Well, first of all, the series is very, very rare, and uh, but it is growing in um, in interest, and I think it will grow going forward. Obviously, you had the huge spike in the dragon; that's kind of an outlier year. But you can see that uh, take that out, and the half ounce are continuing to rise in a general trend. The 300,000 one ounces are capped, so it's going to be very interesting to see this fall when the monkey comes out if we're going to get another one ounce coin that's tremendously overpriced, which drives a lot of demand into the half ounce and the two ounce, or are they going to try to make that a semi numi I really don't know. It's the year of the monkey. We're going to be watching that one very close, closely. We're also going to be watching to see how many coins the, the various dealers that we watch specifically Gainesville, Jam, Bullion, Provident, Atmex, a couple of other minor ones. But uh, obviously, silver stackers aren't being scared away by the FUD of the FOFOAs of the world. Uh, they have one purpose, and that's FUD, to create fear, uncertainty, and doubt in silver stackers. And uh, they've already been proven to be dead wrong, and they're going to be proven to be dead wrong going forward. And we'll talk to you next time.